we have had more than 21 of our students who have got sub 100 ranks we have six such superstars here with us i'm up now i got ninth rank in cd and then when it came to 12th i was more focusing on like you know recall the previous concepts without having to remember every single thing by just by hearting for in 11th and for most part of 12th like instead of like focusing on the end goal which was the exam is to focus on learning the concepts so because when you actually understand some concept you remember it for a very long time but i mostly depended more on uh, daily targets and weekly targets rather than thinking of long term goals i'm a morning person so i dedicate a lot of my time to study in the morning hi everyone welcome to meet the stars my name is rahul shinoy i am the general manager of operations at diksha and we are here to talk about the seat results very happy to say that diksha has done wonderfully more than 50% of the diksha students are going to be entering the top 7 engineering colleges the rvs the pesets the bmss we are doing we are very very happy we have had more than 21 of our students who have got sub 100 ranks and are happy to say that we have six such superstars here with us today okay so let's begin with a round of introductions cool we'll start with you yes so you can tell us your name what rank did you get in your cet so my name is diksha and i got 85th rank in cet great thank you diksha yes. my name is bhuvan and i got 10th rank in cet fantastic bhuvan My name is Satvik and I got 90th rank in CET. Fantastic Satvik, thank you. My name is Samvid, I had gone rank 47 in CET. Congratulations Samvid, thank you. Yes. My name is Chirag and I got rank 24. Fantastic Chirag. I'm Abhinav, I got 9th rank in CET. Congratulations to all of you. Very very well done. All feeling happy now, right? Did you all achieve what you wanted to achieve? Yes. Right? No, no. What targets had you set for your CET ranks? There was no rank in specific. No rank in, okay. Right you, your best ability good okay anyone else did you have any kind of targets anything any number that you said okay i want to get 100 50 i was hoping for a single digit rank before but then after i wrote the exam i didn't wasn't that confident on getting a single digit rank but then i'm happy with what i got 24 is fantastic you know we're talking about more than a lakh uh, people attempting it so it's fantastic right uh, congratulations to all of you let's now uh, understand uh, a little bit about your 10th standard and your 12th standard marks right so uh, i'll start with abhinav abhinav where did you do your 10th uh, i did my 10th in prarthana central school good and uh, what syllabus uh, cbse cbse and what did you score uh, in 10th abhinav 95 95 when cbse that's very good and what did you score uh, in your 12th 98 that's that's big right that's a, that's a good uh, number to reach Yeah, I'm. I studied in BGS National Public School with CBSC board. Yes. Uh, I scored like little bit about ninety percentage itself. Okay. And in twelfth, I got five sixty five out of six hundred. So again, improved from where you did your tenth. Excellent. Uh, I studied in Christ Academy in my tenth grade, CBSC board. Yes. And I had gotten ninety six point eight. Okay. And uh, uh, in what this, in twelfth uh, PU, I had gotten five seventy nine. Very nice, Amit. Congratulations on that. I yes. studied in Vibhyal High, which is ICSC, ICSC, and I got a 97 in my 10th 10th grade, okay. and to 12th I got around 98.3 percent. <laughs> Fantastic, excellent. Congratulations, Satvik. Yes, Bhuvan. I studied in Delhi Public School, Bangalore South, in okay. 10th, which is CBSC. Okay. And I got 97 percent in 10th standard. Okay. And the same in 12th standard. Also. Excellent. Yes, Diksha. I studied in BGS National Public School. It's a CBSC yeah. board. And in tenth I got ninety six percent, and in twelfth I got ninety five percent. Excellent, excellent. All right, so let's uh, begin with what, uh, how you planned. So it's it's a daunting journey. So two years, it's 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 a long period of time. And as important as it is that everyone says you know every day is important, you can't afford to waste a single day, things like that. But I think it's also important to understand that it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, and you need to make sure that you don't fizz out. well before the finish line right so i want to understand from all of you what was it how did you plan these two years what was your mantra to making sure that you balance it out between uh, performing every day as well as uh, you know having that endurance for the two years so yeah uh, can i start with you chirag what was it how did you plan well in the first half of the 12th year and like the entire 11th uh, we had like classes so i should just follow what they were teaching and try to like make sure i understand all the concepts and i just like go about like in that manner itself uh doing questions every now and then like whenever i got the times 
uh, as long as I've made sure that all the concepts from all the chapters were done. And then when it came to 12th, I was more focusing on like, you know, being able to recall the thing, like recall the previous concepts uh, with like uh, this thing without having to remember every single thing by just by hearting. Like sometimes probably I have to derive it and I have to go about like that. So I was making sure that I could like recall like pretty much any topic from... Got uh, it. So 11th, the difference between 11th and 12th was 12th you were focusing more on recalling through concepts. Yeah. You were not trying to... Got it. Got it. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, Abhinav? Uh, well, for in 11th and for most part of 12th, like instead of like focusing on the end goal, which was the exam, is to focus on learning the concepts. So instead of like so, uh, solving, oh, I'll solve like 100 questions a day, which is more relevant in the end of the preparation, is to focus on learning the concepts well so that they can be applied later. So because when you actually understand some concept, you remember it for a very long time. So all the derivations, all the like theories, all the lo uh, like the logic behind solving problems, that was like the main focus for me in 11th and most part of 12th. And uh, during the end of preparation, it was more about like solving more questions, recalling, revising again and again. Yeah. Got it. So Samvet, how did you how did you do this planning? How did you pace yourself through the? So initially, almost till the very end of 12th, all I just all I did was just you know take a mental image of what I want to do in the day, that's all. Focus on the end of the day, what I want to do, and just do my thing. Do Got what it. the teacher is teaching on that day itself, and then practice few problems, more, not more than 10, 15 problems on a topic, and just go ahead. Towards the ending, I just maybe wrote, in this day I want to do this particular concept, mm -hmm. and just go ahead and complete that. And Got it. yeah, solving a little bit of papers here and there. Got it. The so weekly tests also help keep in track of what I'm doing. Got it. So basically trying to just stay uh, at pace with what is being taught, not lag lagging behind and doing that little bit every day. Got it. Yes, uh, Satvik, how did you plan this twelve, uh, this 11th and 12th and pace yourself through uh, it? I also relied, uh, relied a lot on micromanagement. So okay. as you plan the entire year, you're also planning each day Correct. from this time to this time I shall do this. So I always kept in touch with my studies and I never deviated away. Of course, uh, solving homework questions and you know, you know, nagging the teachers for doubts, I always was in par with my studies. So I got guess it. that's how I got it. Planned. So an, an important point that you bring up there is to nag your teachers yes. for doubts. So it's not about them asking you, it's yes. more about proactively you asking yes. them if you don't understand something, solving it right there so that it doesn't, you know, uh, slip out of your mind. It's never one way, it's always two way. Exactly. Very nice, very nice. Excellent. Yes, Bhuvan. Yeah, so in 11th and most of 12th, uh, so me and my twin used to study together. Okay. And we had a fixed schedule every day. Okay. So basically studying from a certain time to a certain time and then having a certain time set aside for discussing doubts we had with mm. each other mm. or discussing some questions or explaining some concept to each other. And uh, it was uh, mostly doing homework questions every day which helped keep the concept clear. Okay. And also trying to finish up whatever was coming for the test, which was in like in the weekly test. Got it. So we wouldn't fall behind on what was being taught. Got it. Thank you, Bhuvan. Yes, Deeksha. So I mostly depended more on uh, daily targets and weekly targets rather than thinking of long-term goals because Very that nice. would cause more stress. Very nice. Yeah. And in uh, towards the end, I started making like targets, like what I want to achieve and uh, how many topics I should cover in a day and solve more problems and revise. Got it. So, yeah. small targets, yeah. make sure you achieve them before going to the next yeah. one, right? Very nice. Excellent. So, uh, I just want to ask you now, I've heard, you know, all your responses about how you try to pace yourself and everything. And I'm sure, uh, as many of you said, the daily part of it is as important as planning the long term, right? So, from the daily angle, right? How did you all manage your time? Because time, I think, is of prime essence. Uh, everyone today who's in the 11th and 12th, you hardly uh, get to even talk to them because they're always shuttling in between uh, classes or studies or tests or things like that. So how did you all manage your time during these two years to A, use it efficiently and B, again, coming back to the point, not let yourself get drained out? So how did you manage your time? We'll start with uh, Satvik. So I am a morning person, so I dedicate a lot of my time to study in the morning. Okay. So I uh, so I come back from college around five, and then okay. uh, from five to seven I study and I just finish the homework. Then around um, seven uh, seven to around nine, okay. I 
no take it for leisure time uh, take a bath or then talk with my family friends and have dinner and again around 9 to 11 i try to you know, do as much studies until my body tells me to just you're shut done, it off you're done for the day then i around um, 11 to 4 i take that time for sleeping so around 5 hours okay. if i get 6 then i'll make most uh, use of it and around 4 to 6 Are in the morning ice okay so you wake up at 4 and then you study again okay okay yes bhuvan uh, so i used to come back home, uh, home from college at around 4:30 mm-hmm. and relax till around 5 mm-hmm. and uh, we used to go out for maybe half an hour with a, like for a walk with our parents nice so it was yeah and then uh, we also used to spend some time on music to kind of relax and calm our mind Excellent. and then we used to study from around uh, 6 to 7:30 Mm-hmm. and then uh, have dinner and then uh, again 8 to 10:30 we used to study and we used to wake up at around 5 in the morning and study till 6:30 okay uh, so that basically covered uh, the studies but Correct. not in one stretch in Got multiple parts so you used to have breaks and study and yeah. breaks and study got it and you had a twin brother also which yeah. probably helped that out excellent yes diksha so yeah i also used to come back by 5:30 and yeah. uh, from 6 to 9 i used to study okay and then take some break and sleep mm-hmm. then in the morning 5 till 6:30 i used to study okay so that's how i used to manage my time and taking break is not like you are deviating from your target mm-hmm. or you are getting distracted it actually helps you to uh, yeah get better at your work thank you thanks dikshu yes abhinav so yeah so i used to commute by bus so okay. i was to reach, reach a little bit late so 5:45 somewhere So actually, in the bus also, I used to get a lot of time to relax. So, okay. Uh, sometimes it can be stressful, but uh, that was also like some time for me to relax one hour, and then I used to come home, uh, relax for fifteen twenty minutes, and start studying. Okay. Have my food and then study for four five hours, uh, like late into the night. Got it. Uh, yeah, that's all I would say. Uh, I used to take like uh, during the five hours that I used to study after like uh, coming home, mm-hmm. like there will be a lot of breaks in between, like. normally a study session would last around 40 minutes then 10 minutes break and uh, same thing going on it's got like it. i have to go out like take some take, keep taking those breaks yes it helps a lot because uh, uh throughout the lo- uh, like when you study for a long time you just uh, sol- while solving problems you just uh, look at the problem for some time and just time passes Correct. you don't know what you are doing and you just waste a lot of time like that Correct. so it's like important to take breaks in between and calm your mind and Like give give yourself a fresh start. Got it. So I think even uh, when you are stuck with a problem, sometimes looking away, coming back to it can sometimes just magically help you solve the problem, right? So I do a lot of puzzles, and when I'm looking at a puzzle, after some time, if I can't uh, seem to solve it, I just let it be and come back later, and suddenly it's right in my face. I'm like, how did I miss that? Right? So that tends to happen sometimes, right? Yes, Chiran. Yeah. So we were in the hostel campus. So okay. there was like a lot. There was like a specific time you weren't allowed to like go back to the hostel whenever you want. Because of that, there was like a lot of time to study. Mm. So it was very easy to find the time to study, and you couldn't take breaks like whenever you want. But then okay. it was given in a like a good interval of time. Okay. Uh, that like when the teaching part was going on, like there used to be study hours every now and then after every class. Okay. Quite often the teachers would just take the study hour for teaching, but then we'd get like uh, study hours to like revise whatever were done in the class. Okay. Then later on from six uh, thirty to eight thirty, we'd get like study hour, self study hour for self study and all. And then after dinner as well, like around nine ten onwards up till ten thirteen in eleventh grade. and then up to 11 30 in 12th grade we had to study so that i'd say would be the most helpful part that's why i was like so you felt that study has helped you a lot yeah and uh, i think having a group to study with also uh, you know uh, i think that's that's a big advantage of yeah. uh, living in a got it living in a hostel uh, environment excellent okay yes so almost the same thing is chirag okay, so okay, yeah okay. we had two hours classes every day almost an hour and a half would be the teacher teaching and then the rest half an hour teacher would maybe give us some problems to solve based on what they've done in the class or revise what they've done in the class so that's how the thing used to go on daily excellent excellent thank you so uh, interesting so couple of interesting points i've picked up uh, during this conversation number one that few few are uh, studying in the mornings 
few of you like studying in the nights, right? This has been, uh, I think, an ongoing pattern. Even I remember a few of my friends doing that. Uh, I used to be a night person and then suddenly became a person who loves studying in the morning. But another thing that I noticed very interestingly is each one of you uh, mentioned the importance of taking breaks, right? I think that's uh, something I want to talk about because when it comes to studies and when it comes to discipline and when it comes to preparing for the 11th, the 12th, the competitive exams, everybody uh, seems to look down about, upon, you know, taking breaks or, you know, frowns upon people relaxing. I think that's uh, a very nice insight that I've got from all of you that breaks are important, right? Very important. So in between your busy schedule, you would manage to take those breaks on a daily basis. Now, other than those daily breaks, how did you manage to, uh, was there something that you used to do, say on a daily basis or a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, but from time to time, how would you uh, just bring down the stress and uh, relax? What were the things, that, some hobbies, some going out, what were the things that you like to do, uh, you know, just to uh, zone out of those studies and relax? So I'll start with Bhuvan, yes. Uh, so yeah, me and my twin are into music. Okay. So almost every day we used to either play the piano or like sing. Very nice. Or uh, sometimes just sit and listen to some music. Okay. Or uh, talk to talk with our parents about maybe some concert which happened. Or so that was like a really uh, stress buster ki uh, kind of thing which we used to do. Got it. And it was pretty much consistent. Uh, like almost every day we used to do that so it. Uh, it was not always like focusing on studies or talking about exams and I think that really helped excellent yes Abhinav uh, I used to take a walk with my dad very often like uh, at least twice a week okay and it used to be a long distance walk like uh, five six kilometers on a stretch okay. it's like you just walk without like thinking about no anything. agenda Plan just walk. walk so what kind of conversations did you engage in then what were your topics of discussion? it was not studying in the leisure of course just, I mean definitely should uh, not be it was just like just whatever what is happening like in the family or what is happening in the world just or sometimes you will not talk at all just walk and that would, yeah, that that actually kind of gives you that uh, recreation that you really need. Yeah, it's like got it. Both of you were in the hostel campus. So, what did you do during your breaks in the hostel campus, as well as when you got to go home uh, or or in your uh, you know outings or things? What did you do uh, during those breaks? Well, the breaks, um, like there wasn't much time to like do it, like um, what do you actually want to do because some stuff like you know, like taking bath in the morning wasn't possible for me. Because you have like very little amount of time to sleep as well, so I had to try to make as much use as I can. So I had to do all that stuff in the evenings. So if I had free time, I'd go and play outside or like sit and talk with the What my games did you like to play? I like to play volleyball or basketball every now and then. Got it. So I was playing mostly those. Awesome. What about you? Yeah. So during the breaks, we had to have our snacks. You have to take bath. You have to play as well. So it used to be like almost alternate days of playing or bathing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so okay. we used to, I used to mainly play cricket most of the time, cricket okay. or sometimes football. Got it. Just helps, you know, calm yourself down. Calm and yourself down. Got it. And uh, Diksha, what about you? Yeah, I used to go down for walk or I used to play table tennis. Okay. And I used to spend some time with my family. So that helped me to calm down. Nice. Excellent. Uh, Satya, I, yes. I had my dogs, so they, they just... I think they are... Yeah. I think therapeutic yes, in themselves. Yes, very right? much. Sometimes you just need, uh, you know, just yeah. uh, just the way they come to you when you yeah. go home. I think uh, gets it's you to relax. Uh, yes. you know. What breed of uh, dogs? Uh, I know? have a retriever, okay. and one is a Shih Tzu. Wow, very nice. Very <laughs> nice. So you have both sizes. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, very nice. excellent. Okay, so, cool. So uh, I'm going to go into a slightly different uh, subject, very important one, which I think it is, and it is. You all have your schedule, you all have your plans, you're all preparing on a daily basis. You're all trying to uh, uh, set small targets, you're trying to achieve it on a daily basis. But then there are those times where something unforeseen happens. You might not feel well, you might have a family function to attend, there might be guests who have come over to your house, anything can happen. And during those times, you fall behind your schedule, right? something uh, which is probably not within your control. What do you do at those times to make sure A, you don't panic, B, you get back on schedule? Because it's very easy when you're when you're following a schedule uh, 
things are going right great but when those times come when you fall back most routines and schedules go into the uh, dustbin at that time because you feel you cannot cope go back or you know cannot uh, go back to that so how did each of you uh, manage those times where where it was not uh, out of your choice but you fell back in your routine how did you uh, manage those times we'll start with abhin now uh, like there are some cases where you can like easily catch up with the backlog in like one or two days okay. and sometimes you have missed something so major that no matter how much you try you can't catch up with the backlog like you're going to study it the next day and you're going to not be able to study what was done on that day and at that point i think it's important to just leave it for them and just try to cope up with what's going on uh, currently so then the other backlog can be covered in like a sunday or some major holiday comes up a vacation comes up you can cover it then the important thing is not to like keep lagging behind the like whatever is going on in the so instead of making it a compounding effect you limit it yes don't panic and you uh, just try to get back on schedule as to what is being taught come back to that when time permits yes. like we do in the exam leave a difficult question and come back to it great okay yes we so didn't that. have like an issue with like guests coming over or anything got it got it okay. but then like couple of times i'd feel like uh, the day is going for a waste i'm not able to learn mm. anything mm. so at that point i was like okay fine let's just relax for the day let's do it tomorrow mm. so uh, generally for me i did not have like a particular target on a daily basis it's just whatever is taught in that week just make sure you finish it like whatever the thing is in the test make sure i like do at least that before the test so i was mostly focusing on that and i generally have like a surplus amount of time for other stuff as well got it and uh, that's generally how we used to plan it got it so two things here what you're saying is number one if you have those targets you have time it's not impossible to complete number one and number two don't panic give yourself that leverage that it's okay right sometimes when you don't feel like doing it or you're not up to it you don't you're not in that mind space you're not absorbing it leave it don't panic it will happen right i think that's that's an important takeaway yes sir yeah so i always tell myself that everything is going to be fine that i should not think too much into the future i rarely ever think more than 2 3 days ahead of what i'm going so i just stay in the present you know that helps a lot to you know keep your cool in situations where you can't do anything about like if you're not well Got that it. kind of thing you should just stay in the situation and you know not think too much of about the consequences itself got it so that's what helps you to stay in track with it got it so deal with it yeah. reassure yourself that it will be okay deal with it and it, you just take it as it comes right not panic too much excellent thank you yes sir um, if i missed any concept i would normally stay back in college you know, just for like half an hour hmm. because i didn't want that half an hour to again compound to one Correct. hour to one day Correct. so just a half an hour it's uh, i know it's your our time is very precious but you using that time get at least the outline of the concept and you'll be and you can manage by yourself by yourself so got it i used to just stay back in college sometimes got it so you would uh, try to put in that little effort to come back but what if i'm just saying what if uh, you know uh, it is a little more than half an hour what would it be? i mean there are those times where you know that you can uh, pick it up in half an hour but then there are those times which you you know you start feeling that sense of panic you know that oh you know there's a big topic that i must say you know uh, this is this this was an important topic and i have really not uh, been uh, you know following it or i've not done my revision and things so how would you come back from those situations uh like abhinav said i would also make most use of the holidays and normally before like the exams you get a lot of breaks mm. just for studying so i'd use all that to cover up all the backlogs got it so you're saying even if you miss there is time there is it's not time. it's not the end of the world got yes uh so suppose like if i fell sick for 3 4 days then all that would be missed and what we what we used to do was maybe change our schedule a little bit and cut down on uh, how much leisure time we have for maybe a week or two and try and uh, maybe catch up with that uh, practice those questions or in college during a uh, games period or uh some free time we have go and meet the teacher and uh, try and finish up those concepts over there got it got it so put in that eff- extra effort go get it done and not not worry yeah. about it too much except <coughs> yes so sir. i used to first complete my daily uh, targets like what i had to do and after that i used to put some extra efforts like one hour or one and a half hour to complete like if i had any backlog or if i like didn't understand any concept that time i used to do that got thank you so i think the underlying message from all of you uh, which i want 
uh, you know the juniors to take from this is that is the fact that all of you also face these situations right it happens to everyone there is no reason to panic it is not the end of the world you can make up for it pretty easily and in case you can't you can let it be and come back to it later and successfully complete it without in any way jeopardizing your uh, marks or anything like that right so this is this is the takeaway that i want the juniors to take is this is this right because that's the underlying message that i saw from all of you correct so now uh, the last part of uh, this discussion i just want to understand uh, between your 11th and 12th i'm sure there was a transition where there was incremental uh, you know dedication that was required effort that was required as well as pressure that was building from the other side so i want to understand from each of you number one how did you manage that pressure that was coming from the outside from the inside and how did you slowly start building up your uh, you know level of effort and studies so we'll start with uh, one of you yes, chirag you can go okay so uh, i my mother never used to bother much about how the studies okay. are going so okay. the parental pressure was not, not at all there, there. Okay. uh teachers would put pressure only when your marks would go down so that time i had to like put a little bit more effort and take it more seriously uh the internal pressure was there towards the like the exams like uh, when the actual exams were coming up so at that point i had to just reassure myself that i have like studied uh, i have done like what uh, i have done the best i could have uh, and uh, it is like it's not possible to like suddenly become really bad at something like right? like you studied for so long you've been getting like pretty good marks itself so it's not you can't suddenly drop your level so just be confident and just do back your whatever. abilities yeah yeah trust yourself excellent yeah so that was what i was doing so because of that i was able to handle it pretty well got it got it yes amit to a, in 11th grade there was not really any pressure from me i never felt any pressure and i just used to go about my daily things towards 12th when i'm going towards the ending is when the pressure started building up you know that daily your parents may just ask you what are you doing more you know frequently correct and at that point i would just you know shut them off i would tell i am doing my thing let me do it Trust and i yeah yeah i'll just, just i'm doing it from you know all this all this time i've been doing it so let me just go ahead and just continue on with it i didn't want to put any pressure on myself and pressure was never an issue for me because good i just used to go on with my daily things i never used to think too much ahead in the future got it so uh you you number one you try to shut off any external pressure yeah. and number two internally you wouldn't pressure yourself you would back yourself yeah. and how did the studies go i mean how did you uh, did you feel that increase in the amount of effort that you had to put through yeah definitely in, in 10th i mean in 11th grade we had to stay till 10:30 in the night and okay. then slowly as we go to 12th grade they would make us stay at 11 compulsorily mm. till 11 in the night 11:15 then at one point 11:30 continuously every day got so it. that itself would you know motivate you to study got it to do more stuff in that time got it so that was you know got it. to keep in check with that thank you yes bhuvan coming to you uh, how did you yeah so i think i was really lucky because uh, obviously pressure was there but since it was me and my brother so we had two so Shed it is by yeah two. so it was always as encouraging each other and like telling ourselves that uh, don't get uh, bogged down by all this everything will be all right got it and also we used to talk to our parents maybe uh, tell them that we have only done this much the test has this much and they would tell us that uh, you know focus on what you already know you don't need to worry about what you don't know you can always do that later got it and the pressure of doing well in the exam we used to tell ourselves just to just go and do the exam not really worry about am i going to get this marks what college am i going to end up with these kind of marks how the actual exam is going to go and so yeah it was just more of talking with our parents and uh, with Good. my brother and just trying to reduce so it the helps it helps yeah. sometimes talking uh, you have uh, you had a twin brother who's doing the course with you but otherwise also i think it helps talking to friends talking to family and you know sharing your actual emotions sometimes when you're feeling that pressure it's like that pressure cooker you need to release that pressure right so when you talk sometimes that pressure releases and you feel better excellent yes um for me it was all about having first self confidence uh for all anything just have the confidence within yourself and also i always believe in uh, when you work hard you will reap the benefits the hard work is never goes unrewarded 
and uh, pressure wise my parents they also uh, they also did high trust in me that was that's the that's basis the just have trust you know even if you see your child taking a break have trust ki he's taking a break so that he can chill and again come back so trust was the foundation so i didn't have much pressure got it yes diksha uh, in 11th it was mostly online so i had more time to spend with my parents, parents family, family. And I also used to do some other activities which could like stress. I mean, there was no stress or pressure as such. And it started building up like towards the end of 12th, like okay. when the exam started coming closer. But then I told myself like I've given so many mock tests. I've done well in those. So suddenly nothing can change. So it's going to be the same. So I used to reduce the pressure. Back, back yourself, yeah. trust yourself. I think that's that's a very, very good thing. And... Uh, did you also slowly start increasing the amount of time that you put in your studies? Yeah, through the, in 11th so it wasn't. So your sleeping time starts reducing, yeah. what happens? In 11th it wasn't like very stressful because it was online, nobody was there to mentor us and all. So it was, uh, I didn't study that long and I didn't like have a goal or anything. But slowly in 12th when I started coming to offline classes and seeing my peers around me, then I realized I have to do something more and yeah, it slowly increased. Excellent. Yes, Sabino, coming to you. So, like from teachers and family, I didn't have any pressure. Mm -hmm. Like, but for the internal pressure, I think you have to experience what it does for you to understand that you don't need to ha like take. Uh, how do I say this? You don't need to be under pressure. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, towards the end of twelfth, like in November or October, I wrote an Olympiad. Okay. And I really wanted to qualify that Olympiad because I like the subject very much. Okay. But I, I was under a lot of stress and like, okay, I have to do this, I have to do this. And I didn't, I couldn't qualify it because like, uh, because of all the stress, I couldn't like properly perform in the exam. That gave mm -hmm. me like a idea, okay, this is what stress is. Uh, a reality check. Yeah. yeah. Not, not like reality check. It's like, okay, if I am stressed in the exam, this is the outcome. Even though I've prepared this much, I'm not going to be able to perform well. So moving on, I was just like, okay, the, the exam is coming up. I've done all I can. Just write the exam. Go for it. Be as chill as possible. Just write it. I can't do anything else. So that actually helps uh, increase your performance also. More than actually studying. If you are under uh, less stress, your performance goes up. That's what I think. Agreed. So again, uh, what, I, what I take from all of you is that all of you have faced some amount of pressure, but you deal with it by A, backing your abilities, B, trusting the fact that I have done my work, it will all be fine. Right? Something like you said, something is just not going to go absolutely uh, you know, downhill because I have done, I know my concepts. right? So backing that ability is trusting yourself and at times confiding in people, sharing your emotions, telling people that you know, I am feeling this. Being open about your stress also helps at times, right? So confiding in the in the friends, excellent. Let's now move into your entire exams, right? So you had your 12 standard exams and I just want to go into the build up to those exams. So you've been giving tests over the last two years. You've had tests on almost a weekly basis. I want to understand from you how helpful those tests were, how much pressure they created, what was your experience? I, you can share whatever you want. Uh, so, uh, for most of the year, uh, I think throughout 11th and for most of 12th, we had chapter tests. So, they didn't cover all the portions, but they were in the pattern of the uh, final exam. Okay. So, we used to uh, study only those chapters and write that. And I think whatever marks you get in those tests uh, don't necessarily reflect how you will actually do the exam. Instead, they're only there to serve I think two purposes one is to correctly like probably force you to follow a schedule to finish certain chapters by certain time and uh, one more is to evaluate how much you actually have understood in the chapter and maybe take steps to uh, you know correct your doubts after the test has happened Got it. and then towards the exam we had more mock tests that is full length tests and that gave us more of an idea of how to actually approach the exam. So like maybe uh, how many questions should I solve within the first 30 minutes? Got it. Or uh, should I leave the difficult questions to the end or should I attempt those first? 
or uh, also uh, you know trying to figure out that oh yes i'm getting very nervous towards the end so i should maybe ca- try and calm down in the middle of the exam got and it. that basically reinforces your exam strategy so you go and prepare on the exam day got it so would everybody else agree with this uh, point that uh, you know it helps reevaluate your strengths and weaknesses in the subject did these tests help you yeah it helps us to keep us consistent almost in everything in our studies so we're always on par got no, it it's like a, always a push up no to being push where it. you're supposed to be got it got it yeah yeah but then sometimes the test can like vary in like difficulties and stuff mm. so you can't exactly rely on that to determine how your test will go in the actual final test and the pressure like which will come on the final thing cannot be, cannot be replicated it cannot be replicated anywhere okay. else uh because let's like it's a different thing itself um and then the beginning when we had like weekly tests it was like there wasn't much pressure for me because i was more focused on the concept as least bothered about the test later on like towards the end is where the test actually ha- be helpful because then you can figure out like how you're spending your time in these tests you can figure out like where you're lacking and how you can get more marks like sometimes not know, knowing the concept itself is not enough you have to manage your time within the exam as well you need to make sure you're consistent in like avoiding the silly errors that you do and all those kind of stuff so that's the stuff like the mock test actually helped me uh, make better off like earlier i'd make a lot of silly mistakes but then eventually i started figuring out like how to avoid those silly mistakes during the exams and that helped me improve the final this thing result got it got it and uh, adding to chirak's point mm-hmm. like in the same way that the uh, academically the mock test need, need not reflect on the final exam result even the environment of the test in the college you'll get the test in a very peaceful environment everything will be quiet you'll get the most ideal uh, place to take the exam in like the omr is distributed on time it's collected on time you get proper like rough sheets you get a proper i don't know uh, environment the desk ideal is, setting if i would say even the desks uh, the chairs everything is good over there but once you actually get the center you may not get the same things you get like while writing the mock test so you have to always be prepared got uh in the college test you may have sometimes option of like like choosing the place where you sit so sometimes uh, what this is what i used to do so i used to choose one place in the classroom and take all my tests over there and once i use like change the position it becomes a whole different environment <laughs> and that really impacts got you got it go to the actual centers it's never on time everything some has to be some disturbance some lack you know, which might compromise if you always stick to that rigorous environment so gotcha. it's always a constant change is very good okay. and also in uh, 12th we had omr tests mm-hmm. but finally it was online okay. so that there was a transition was there a transition. And, yeah okay. so but in the uh, like end we used to even write online tests to get familiarized with so you with got the, that practice yeah. also okay okay nice okay excellent and uh, let's come to the big day the d day right now right so your uh, ct exams are tomorrow so what did today feel like what was what was the feeling how did you uh, sleep the previous night how was it how was it all uh, what was the feeling so the like? day before the ct test i would not study anything i would not revise anything i would just keep myself calm you know just look outside maybe watch a little tv just not think too much about what's going to happen the next day not put too much pressure on it which helps you know keeping yourself in touch fantastic in that exam itself fantastic if you could do that that's fantastic yes and the thing with ct exams is it's four different exams Correct. so it's very it's not like put all your effort in that three hours Correct. so there are four different hours and it's uh, this thing so you've got to you know have that confidence like for the entire day you're not supposed to Correct. you know uh, be defeated yeah, so you, that's you the, have to pace it out yeah. as well correct got it yeah and i think one more thing which really helped was on the previous day uh, obviously not studying too much will help because that won't like overcrowd your mind but also like uh, you, you know your parents giving you a small pep talk and like kind of telling you you have done as much as you can and you will do well tomorrow also really help so getting that sense of reassurance from somebody who means a lot to you so your parents your friends you have done it you have done it you prepared well you know you'll do well and also not pressuring yourself too much It's trying to relax on those days yes so before the d day like other than not studying or revising one thing i would like i'd like to do was in the night i would walk just keep walking until i get tired 
and that would force my body to sleep. Okay. So there was no point of getting nervous because you had to sleep. Got it. So yeah. that really helped a lot. Like it was like uh, there was no issue of oh I'm too nervous I can't sleep till twelve in the night because you were so tired that you would just sleep. Excellent. Very interesting. Very interesting. Approach. I mean uh, the point is to just do a light walk or a exercise. It's not like you do a marathon so yeah, that you end up with sore muscles yeah. the next day. Got it. Got it. Very nice. And right. also like on the on one day we used to have two tests. Correct. So if the first test goes bad that shouldn't reflect on the second one. Very true. Very true. So yes. we have to back ourselves during the break between the two tests so that our next test doesn't go bad. Very nice. Yes. So again we went back to uh, we had uh, spoken about some of you being uh, morning uh, people, some of you being night people when it comes to study. So the day before the uh, test, so what time was it? What time did your test begin? 10.30. 10.30. Okay. So the previous night, what time did you say, okay, what time did you say I'm going to bed now? What time did you sleep? How many hours of sleep were you able to manage to get the previous night? Around 9.30 to 10, I'd go to sleep. Okay. I'd get like around seven and a half, Fantastic. maybe eight. Fantastic. Okay. 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 And then uh, it's about it. Got it. What about? Yes, yeah, so I would sleep at around eleven, and then get up at maybe seven, eight. Get Very like nice. eight Very hours nice. of sleep. Getting that, getting that proper sleep in. Okay. Uh, Ten thirty to six thirty. Like Excellent. Eight hours or eight more hours. than that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sleeping at ten and getting up at uh, five or six. Ten to six thirty. Fantastic. Same. Eight hours. Of sleep. So I think unanimously all of you are saying that day before the exam, yeah. whatever you've been doing before that, you know, four, five, six hours, but the day before the exam, it's important to have that seven, eight hours of sleep. Get your mind at rest so that you're very calm when you go into the exam. Very nice, very interesting. I think this is a very important message that goes out to your juniors because many uh, students, the day before the exam, Today, one day I will study, you know, I will make sure, I'll, I'll come back and sleep after the exam. Now don't disturb, now I want to study. And this is what happens. And unfortunately, by the time they go into the exam hall, their mind, their brain is so drained out that they can't reproduce what they've learned, right? Great. And uh, so you said 10.30 your uh, exam began. So what time did you uh, all reach the exam center? Around 9.45 and I'll go 45. into the exam hall by around 9. 9.50ish and then maybe I just meditate over there. I just meditate close my eyes and just stay, just Got calm it. myself and keep my breathing in check. Nice. And what about you guys? What uh, time did you reach the exam? Around 9.30, 9.30 and I went inside by 9.45. Okay. And I didn't speak to anyone there because it could tense me up. So yeah. I was just with myself and okay. there, yeah. And how did you manage those 45 minutes? Were there, were there those butterflies in your stomach and were you... Yeah, meditation, breathing, breathing. Okay. just stay calm. Stay calm. Yeah. Did you open any books at no. the time? Okay, right. What about you guys? Yeah, just staying calm the entire time. Did you reach also about? Yeah, hour, I, I reached. Hour, yeah, hour I reached early. Time. Okay, you guys? Uh, this may seem excessive, but I reached at nine o'clock because my parents like to be cautious. Okay. So, so where, which which part of uh, Bangalore did you have your test? Bus one Godi. Okay, and where were you going from? Uh, Uttarali. Uh, so I think I think it's important. Uh, be before time on that one. If the test center is far, I think being there as early as possible is okay. the best thing. Yeah. They give like a reporting time on the sheet and stuff, so I'd mostly follow that. A little bit like five, ten minutes late also is not a big issue. Um, and in the exam, I'd just like try to keep myself calm by just again like focusing on my breathing. Right. And that's it. And in the examination, I just focus on the question instead of like right. uh, thinking about whether I'm feeling anxious or worried. or Got it. So I think uh, very important is to reach the exam hall a little before time, right? I think I think it all adds up, right? That that sleeping early, waking up early, being relaxed in that relaxed frame of mind, and then reaching the exam hall early so that you're not you're not your heart uh, rate is not very high when you're there, right? Even if it is, you have time to calm it down. You have time to get used to the environment, the surroundings. So reach a little early, right? Not you know, if 10.30 is around 10.25, run, run, run into the class and sweaty and just sit. That, that I think also adds, even if you've studied, if you've slept, but just reaching that exam hall a little early gives you that sense of calm or time to, you know, get into that sense of calm, right? Okay, so you've sat in the exam hall, you've meditated uh, your uh, paper that it clock hits 10.30 and you've got your papers, right? What then? How do you 
go about it. So you do you all go through the entire questions once and then start answering, or do you say no? Let me go one by one. What are your what are your uh, ways of attacking the paper? So I just generally just I keep on solving one question after another. If I if I see a question and I know for sure that this is going to take a lot of time because lengthy calculation, all those kind of things. I just leave it over there and it okay. carry on. Okay. But mostly I don't scan the questions and you don't figure it out. I just go one, 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 one. one. The other. Okay. One more thing I keep on doing is I just wait for the exam to get over. So there's like, you know, I don't think much. I just don't think about the result. I just think about the exam just getting over so that I can relax. And okay. that's what keeps me, you know, motivated Motivate. to continue going on in that one hour, 70 minutes CT exam. Just Got it. wait for the end to come. That's all. Got it. Well, I had I like prepared mock tests and stuff before, so I'd already planned how I'm going to approach the paper, which section I want to approach, how I would go, and like there are different tests which have like different uh, conditions, like in Manipal you cannot revisit the question, so stuff like that. Based on that, I changed my approach, and but then generally it was like I'd attempt the question maybe twice. If I'm not getting it, I'll skip it. If I have time, I'll come back to it. Got it. Uh, and that was generally my approach. And I'd go for like the con uh, my confidence subject first and keep maths for the last. Okay. And uh, do you also do you uh, also not scan the entire paper before? No. So you just go question by question. Yeah. You don't read everything. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I do a similar thing, but sometimes in CT the questions from the same chapter are often grouped together. If hmm. I'm not wrong. Hmm. So sometimes when when you can't get a Say, uh, like one question, like subsequently you may have difficulty getting the other questions even though they are easy. So that time I like to like skip to some other section and start again. So that like gives a fresh start and you can come back to the left. That's a very, very interesting point. You know, sometimes he says the topics are grouped together. So instead of skipping one question, coming back again, getting demotivated with the next question, you try to skip that topic. You, I'm sure, will realize where that topic ends and come back to the topic once you've done the paper. Very nice, very interesting point. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Yes. Um, I normally, I do also one one. I don't skim the entire paper. Uh, what I do is uh, those questions which I am absolutely not able to solve. I first finish all the easy ones, and I know that KCT being an exam that does not have negative marking for the until the last two minutes, I solve everything. But those for those last two minutes, I just bubble whatever Bubble. answer I get because yes. I take advantage of the fact Correct. that there's no negative marking or and if I get a coincidentally if I, if I get that answer it's going to be good for me Correct. so I I do that it should work yeah uh. so so finish what you can yeah. and if you can't don't leave anything don't leave because still attempt CET it. is like you said no negative marking so very important sometimes you know you're trying to answer mm -hmm. one question to the last minute that even if you know this concept mm -hmm. that there's no negative marking you don't have time to bubble it mm -hmm. right so at least what you have a hunch on bubble that okay. and finish it make sure all the questions are marked right okay yes Rohan. yeah so for me uh, basically uh, i just stuck to what i had been doing in the mock tests because uh, those mock tests basically are like a place where you can uh, fix how you're going to attempt the exam like Firag said and so that was how I did it in the actual exam also and also I think it's quite important especially in an exam like CET where you have very less time per question to not get panicky that oh this question took two minutes or oh I, I, I have not hit my target and uh, obviously look at the clock and see where you are but also just keep solving without getting panicked. Got it, got it. Thank you. Yeah, even I used to, I didn't scan the paper, I used to solve questions and whenever I felt it's difficult, I used to skip it. If I had time, I would come back. And also, like after like solving 10 questions, I would even bubble it because in the end, sometimes when you go to the end, you will get tensed or you get pressured. And you, sometimes the bubbling might go wrong and so... But in the end, I used to make sure that all questions are attempted. So you would you would bubble each question, read each question, or go section wise. Right? And yeah, section wise. So I every ten questions, one, yeah, ten bubble, questions, bubble. Ten then, questions yeah. bubble. And is that how all of you did it? Or I completed the entire paper and then I bubbled then the end. Bubbled. But then I had miss bubbled. I think so three questions okay. in physics. Okay. So that has its. So so either bubbling after each question or after a section might be advantageous. Okay. So uh, I think I think uh, the thought is pretty evident here that go for the questions that you're confident about. Don't panic about the questions that you're not. And most importantly, make sure you mark all the questions. Right? Don't miss out on the fact that there is no negative marking here. Take the most, make the most of that advantage. And uh, so during the test, I'm sure there was at least 
few of those moments where you all felt a sense of panic with with you know a couple of sometimes what happens is everything is going well and then suddenly those two three questions come where you are you know a little uh, misplaced or you know you're not you're not in your comfort zone anymore so what would you do in those situations and how did you come back and say no it's it's fine so what what was your uh, thought process at that time because it's all come down to that day right this is the day that you've been working for the last two years and even a small uh, you know deviation from what you think should be the path can be very very uh, you know scary at that time right so how do you just come back because this is an important a uh, message that i want you to give out to the you know to the juniors so what do you do at that moment how do you go past that like if you can't solve one question even after trying it twice at most uh i think the best option is to just leave it and solve it as like giving as much as a time break as possible because after like solving it twice your mind is conditioned to the solution you are trying okay. to achieve maybe that's not a correct approach but you will try to use that approach again and again and the quicker you come back to the question again the idea will be still fresh in your mind and you will go back to the way you are solving it before so if you come back to it later maybe you get a new approach a new idea or you see the mistake you are making Got and it. that is so try to give as much gap between your second attempt to that question as possible very nice and how much time do you think uh, you would allot at the most to a question without Uh, you know if you've not got it okay this is the maximum after this i will go to the next question what is that do you have any kind of time allotted per question i'm sure you have a mental image of a time allotted per question but what is the maximum that you will dedicate to a question before leaving it and going forward probably an extra minute i mean one minute for that Correct. and an extra minute an extra minute you i know you're you're jeopardizing another one but if yeah you want to prioritize the question in only 1 minute extra so 2 minutes and that's yes. it right then you move past everybody is agreeing with that yeah 2 minutes it's been a little bit more because some questions like you require much less than a minute and mm-hmm. you can solve them so i am aware of that and because of that i can spend like at least 3 to 4 minutes okay on a particular question if it's maybe being lengthy because i can catch up on the time elsewhere as well so got it so you're you're sh- you're certain that you can make up yeah. for this time so you'll spend about 3 to 4 minutes but all of you believe that yeah don't get stuck on a question for more than a few minutes because it can bog down and it can actually uh, contribute to you doing uh, badly in the rest of the questions uh, i also think that uh, like what i used to think was for a particular question if i was not able to think of an approach within the first 10 or 15 seconds i thought it was like there is no point in trying to think of the approach and solve it all within that one minute or minute and a half Uh, so for those kind of questions i used to leave them almost as soon as i saw them but then as uh, everyone said for questions which i thought i knew the approach and went a certain way uh, solving them and it still did not come maybe a maximum of 2 minutes got it got it cool thanks guys now i'm going to ask you a very different question okay we'll finish with this question what was the first thing that you did after your exam which you've been looking forward to do what was that one thing that as soon as your exam was done i want to do what is the first fun thing that you were waiting for in your dead after your exam you're thinking the most for this i'm <laughs> going to a movie probably okay which movie did you go for uh, spider verse across the spider super enjoyed yes excellent what about you i went home and read some manhwa cuz i'm okay. entertained with the comics okay so how did you feel i mean how was that feeling after uh, you know just finishing that exam and going home I was like oh it's finally over now no one's going to stop okay. nagging me. Okay. It's like it's over okay. done. If done. they start complaining anymore I'm just not going to take it. Great. Yeah, yes. so I just used to watch shows just be happy that it's completely over and then you know Sometimes you feel overwhelmed by the amount of time you have. Right? You go home and you're like okay I have okay one hour two hours it's not getting over. What what shows did you watch? I watched like mainly sitcoms I used to watch friends maybe okay. Yeah, you should have a friends quiz man i i i'm a huge fan so i can uh, probably go to any you can show me any episode of friends pause and say what's the next dialogue and i'll tell you that's how big a fan i'm of friends yes i uh, ate lot of junk food i guess cuz you know, for the like almost like a weeks before exams my mom would be like no no was <laughs> sirf ghar ka khana so then take care of yeah, your time yeah take care uh, yeah. i mean health also was important of so. course of course it is i mean try to so what is what is what's your guilty pleasure when it comes to food what do you like anything <laughs> i mean not yeah. cool. 
Okay. Yes. So we hadn't really had a proper family trip for like two okay. years because okay. of all this preparation. So that was what I was really looking forward okay. to. So that was what we did. Where did you go? We went to Shringeri. Very nice. Enjoyed? Yeah. Just the four of you? Yeah. Very nice. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Even I went for family trip. Where did you go? I went to Kudre Mukh. Very nice. Yeah. Enjoyed? Yeah. Who all? Who? How many of you? Went? Me and my father. Okay. And we went for the trek. Yeah. You went trekking? Yeah. You like trekking? Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Great. Wonderful. So, what's the feeling now, after absorbing, you know, the marks, the entire success that you've all been able to achieve? How are you guys feeling now? Was it worth the effort? It's definitely. Definitely, definitely worth, worth, the worth the effort. The happy, effort. happy with what you've accomplished, right? I'm sure that those two years, there were those times where you felt, is it worth the effort? I'm, I'm, I'm going. You, I'm sure you saw uh, fellow uh, students enjoying a lot more than you at times. Right? I'm sure there were those moments and you probably would have questioned yourself. But I hope right now you are in that zone where you're happy with what you've done, where you're satisfied and you felt you've taken the right decision at the right time. Right? Great. Congratulations. You've conquered something fantastic. And uh, I want to understand from all of you, what role do you think your college, what role has Deeksha played in this entire success? Uh, you can, we can talk about your teachers, we can talk about the mentoring. So, I just want to understand from all of you, what role has, uh, you know, Deeksha played in the success? For me, in like in 10th, I barely got like 90 percentage. So, I was clearly like slightly above average, if not average student. So, then for me, as like discipline was like a little bit tough. I used to rather go towards like a gadget rather than sit and study. And uh, when I went to Deeksha, I was forced to stay over there. I didn't have any access to gadgets. So it like brought in at least a little bit of discipline within me. Uh, there, like the thing is already like based on what previous toppers and stuff who have like got top ranks and advanced and stuff, like how they prepare. It's like the same kind of schedule that was uh, made for us to follow. So it was like better. So I didn't have to like go look after the uh, this thing. I didn't have to have any contacts with those top people. So to know what they did is basically just following the thing, following the schedule of what the college does is basically like doing what the other toppers have done. So basically that helped me a lot more than like uh, this thing, studying by myself. That one obviously played a very important role. Uh, I think that was what changed me the most, I'd say. Teachers were obviously helpful. I mean, like any other place also would like have a similar kind of teaching and like I, I can't say that one teacher would be better than the other so i'd say the place itself was more important for me rather than the yeah, thing I teachers play a, a very big role i mean they're the best discipline regulators and um not only that i mean i we really appreciate the efforts of them coming and standing one hour you know giving us uh, giving us their thoughts their pearls of wisdom and also the mentoring that they used to do and um yeah it was uh, it was always like having a, you know, that's why they call it Diksha parent. It's like having another parent, you know, we could just uh, talk about with studies and all. And uh, college did play a very big role. And uh, even with college, even having our classmates by our side, you know, as friends, you know, talking to them, venting out stuff, you know, probably I didn't get such uh, good marks, you know, what should I do? Also, uh, listening to them, listening to what they, uh, what they want, what, what they offer. So it's, it's a very, it's a big deal. It's, uh, it's like you're living, a second life at Diksha. So, so, so yeah, in, in judicial layout itself, we would have some days in which a particular teacher would stay over till 8 30 in the night to just, you know, solve our doubts only for the sole purpose of solving our doubts, which is, you know, really helpful in keeping our concepts in check. So, the teacher staying there till 8 30 was, you know, pretty nice actually. Yeah, like uh, I don't think any teacher refused to, uh, you know, solve your doubts mm -hmm. whenever you call them or message them. And they were more than happy to, in fact, uh, stay back for, you know, an hour, hour and a half uh, and uh, clarify your doubts and really set your concepts straight. I think the fact that the teachers were willing to give their own personal phone number to you and, uh, like, tell you that you can contact them at any time is a big thing in itself. Because until, uh, like, in my school days, until 10, you could only see your teacher at from this point of the day till this point of the day, you go even a little bit later to ask them doubts, they are like, no. But in Diksha, at least the teachers were like, okay, I'll stay back a little bit, I'll clear your doubts, 
uh, okay, you will study at night. If you have any doubt, you can message me at that time and I, when I am free, I will uh, reply. That really helps a lot. It helps develop a connection with the teacher. And also in the end, we used to have extra classes which they used to take for us to uh, teach some extra concepts which would also help us in, which helped in my exams, some extra concepts which they taught. So they were willing to stay for us a little later and teach extra, so it also helped. And also if we had any doubts, like after writing tests, we could always clarify with them and they were always there to clear our doubts. Our teachers always made us, you know, be in touch with the toppers, you know, of the, the previous sessions and uh, it's, you know, it's very, uh, it's very nice to see how uh, our, the, when we look up to our toppers, they had the same material, the same books, the same teachers, the same environment. So how, how can we not get the benefit of the doubt? So this, that's also what uh, Deeksha did. They and talking about the environment in Deeksha, I think it was probably one of the best environments which a student could have gotten at this point. Uh, because first of all, uh, obviously it brings uh, people with similar goals together. So all the all your st all your friends around you also have the same goal of cracking uh, CET and getting some top colleges and all that. So I think that bringing uh, people together who have similar goal really helps because you can always learn off each other and like motivate each other and uh, basically you're one unit from then on. Yeah, the peer group uh, in Diksha is really good because you have a lot of people who are better than you and they are going towards the same goal. It is very hard to like be the best in the class or in the college for long periods of time. And uh, the people around you, they are uh, good in a variety of things. So once you like establish a good like friend group and a peer group, you are able to learn a lot of things from different people. So that really helps a lot. Yeah, like sometimes some people wouldn't have their own sort of motivation and uh, then it would be like, it would be difficult for them to keep continuing. But if you're sitting amongst your uh, peers who are like going along with this thing and they're also studying, like uh, no one would want to get left behind. So they just study as it is and like that only would serve as motivation for those yeah, people. Like well. if at any point I'm feeling sleepy during the study hours, I just look around me and everybody else is studying. That itself would, you know, motivate me to go forward and just, you know, study. What kind of material? How did the material help? Referring to the teacher's notes that they've done during the class, it's, I felt much more helpful to me. For, for problems purposes, I actually used it from time to time. The so the notes were good, the notes that the teachers gave yeah. in the class were good? For uh, uh, practice questions, they gave it concept-wise. So that helped to you know, find out where your difficulties are, where you're lagging behind, where you're actually good at. So Diksha material did help us, even with the educator app. Uh, if uh, you know, they get a lot of links sometimes to uh, different videos of the teacher explaining that same concept if you didn't get it in class. So it did have a great impact. Yeah, personally, I found like the Deeksha material really structured and because it was like broken down into uh, topics and like classwork questions and homework questions. So actually throughout 11th, I think doing the homework questions was uh, like a daily thing for uh, me and my twin. And I think that really helped us set a proper schedule and uh, obviously uh, clarify doubts and you know stay up to date with what the teacher is doing. And it really did help and uh, the quality of questions obviously increased uh, as we uh, went to towards end of uh, chapter questions, the difficulty also increased. And uh, yeah, it really did help. And also I think uh, uh, in the competitive manuals, there used to be uh, a s s section dedicated to time-saving results, which uh, was actually pretty helpful in certain cases because you don't really need to remember uh, uh, how to like derive it or maybe start from the basics and you can instead use one of these results and get the answer quickly. And especially in like a time-critical exam like CET where you have very less time, I think that's really important. All of you mentioned in your introductions that you are from either the ICAC or the CBSE board and then you decided to join the PU board for your 11th and 12th. So what sparked this de uh, decision? What made you change? Because there is a lot of apprehension around this. So I want to understand from all of you what was the reason for this decision, for this change? So I had asked quite a few people on this and then the main thing that I heard from the CBSE board on in 11th and 12th is that there are a lot of projects to do and the tests itself are pretty hard. Like they're almost like mains level questions which wouldn't give you too much time to focus on the other things. So 
that's what my the reason I took PU board is we don't have much projects and also that it's much easier. The PU itself is much easier, so you have much more time to focus on the competitive exams and hence get a better result. The part of shifting from a board like ICC to PU is uh, was a good decision because uh, PU is not that daunting when compared to the other boards because uh, your main focus is science and of course your competitive exams are based on science and they, uh, the amount of uh, 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 pressure or the e importance given to uh, subjects like English or language is not that great when compared to ISC or CBSC because I remember in my 10th grade uh, ICSE there used to be a lot of importance given to um, English to the extent that there used to be two separate exams for language and literature but now in uh, PUC there wasn't uh, that much so you could give more uh, time to science and even choosing a second language like French which was uh, comparatively easier also had made extra time for uh, uh, working on my science subject so that helped a lot in the PU board. Mm -hmm. So the same reason because like state board is like relatively simpler compared to the other boards and so I definitely gone for uh, state win because I had to co like concentrate for competitive exams and stuff but then the why we chose Diksha is because it has integrated uh, coaching for competitive exams as well like if you had gone for something separate like taken uh, any other random PU college and then gone for a coaching separately it could be cases where like they teach it differently the exams could be clashing so it could be like a problem and stuff so it's, it's a lot better with uh, the whole thing combined well apart from the difficulty uh, exams like CET have 50% uh, weightage from boards also and so the easier the board is the more you can score and it directly affects your rank in these exams uh, yeah like everybody said i think switching from icse or cbse to pu the main reason was because the pu board questions are uh, comparatively easier so you can always focus more on the competitive exams but also one more issue which i faced was switching from german second language to french second language but i don't think that was uh, as much as an issue as i first thought because uh, you can always use like uh, online learning, uh, language learning apps like Duolingo or have a teacher teach you some French because the, lang the level of the language you learn is not so high that you won't be able to focus on uh, your core subjects. So I don't think that is as much as an issue as most people think it is. And also PU, you get more free time as compared to other boards so you can uh, more focus on competitive. Also, even if you study in the last moment, you can get good marks uh, rather than CBSC or ICSC where you have to do projects and you should keep up with the syllabus from the beginning and you can't just do it in the end. Great. Thank you.